are not enough. To worship Him is the best thing we can ever do. To be in His presence is the best place we can ever be. So in this place, seek the Lord in your own way. Meet the Lord in your own way. Have fellowship with the Lord in your own way. Do not leave this place the same. No one meets with the King and leaves the same. Grasp your blessing from the King. Know that in the King's presence is provision. There's nothing wrong with walking away with your blessing in the King's presence. Lord, we thank you this morning. We honor you this morning, oh God. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you that the King can say, I am his friend. Thank you that I can go before the King's presence without fear of judgment, but Lord God, to expect nothing else but love. Thank you, oh God, because you are good and you are good to me and my family. Father, thank you that you are good even to my friends, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that you give me life, Lord God, the breath of life to wake up another day, Lord God, and mighty Father, to bring out praise and worship even in this living vessel. Mighty Father, thank you. Lord God, mighty Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that in this place, Lord God, may your liberty and your freedom, mighty God, set loose your children, that as they enter into this place, this sanctuary, Lord God, mighty God, may the spirit of heaviness set them loose, and that they can lift up their hands and worship and praise you according to your will. Father, we thank you. This morning, mighty Father, knowing, mighty God, that you are doing a new thing and you are indeed doing a new thing. Father, we say thank you for every vessel, mighty God, that is coming to this place. May you fill them, Lord God, with a new anointing. May you fill them, Lord God, with a new breath, mighty Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know where we are going, mighty Father. And Lord God, you guide us so we know we are safe, mighty Father. You lead us and we will follow, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in this house, we say, Lord God, let your presence flow. Holy Spirit, saturate every vessel that comes in this place, Lord God. From the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord God. Let your presence be evident upon each and every individual in this place. On our mothers and on our fathers. Mighty God, on our children and on our brothers and sisters. Mighty God, may your presence, your virtue be evident in this place. We pray even for them that are even watching on video. That Lord God, may your presence touch them in Jesus' name. We give you glory and we give you honor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. To be in a position where a great, where the great king can say, you are my friend. And when you can say, I am a friend to the king, is such an honor. Hallelujah.
calls me friend. Together, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Oh Lord, that you hear me mm -hmm. when I. today, but by the grace of God, he that deserves to be worshipped, that deserves to be glorified.
the Lord this morning whatever you feel no matter how heavy you feel just try loving the Lord this morning that is all you need
presence, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Yes, you. Praise Him, help me. Yes, you. this morning. Just worship the Lord in this morning. For this is the reason you came to this place. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. It's not about the song. Just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. Oh, just worship him this morning. Just worship him this morning. Just worship, just worship, just worship. Touch the hem of his garment. Don't miss this moment. Oh. For yours is the kingdom, Lord, the power. the 
presence of the Lord in this place.
Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh Lord, victory belongs to Jesus. Father, this morning that is our declaration. Victory belong to Jesus. Victory belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory belong to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the victory you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the victory you are continually giving us. Thank you, Lord, you are what you are going to give us. We are confident in the name of Jesus. We shall be victorious. Because Jesus, you won the battle on the cross. You rose again. Ascended into heaven. Seated at the right hand of the Father. And interceding for us. And given us the confidence to approach the throne of grace with confidence. And call you Abba Father. Thank you Lord. Father, on the second Sunday of June 2022, as your children of God, we surrender our lives before you. Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, this morning as we are here, we totally humble and surrender our lives before you, God. Father, any of us carry burdens, sicknesses, pain, brokenness, confusion. This morning you are addressing it from the sanctuary in the name of Jesus. When your people go, they shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. They shall have an encounter with Jesus. They shall see the light of Jesus. Thank you, God. They, whatever they are desperately crying and praying from the throne of God, O oh Lord, my cry and my prayer, you shall answer according to your riches in glory. Your favor, your blessing, your protection shall be upon your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, today, what you wanted to accomplish in our midst, you shall accomplish in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Lord, we also commit our nation, Zambia, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, from the president to every citizen of this nation, may you be blessed. Oh Lord, bless this nation, oh God. You are blessed, oh God. Every plan of the enemy, we shall paralyze it in the name of Jesus. We pray you will bless and prosper the nation. We pray various nations that are representing in this church. We pray, God, your eternal presence, your grace, your abundance will be upon the nation of Jesus, O Lord. Lord, and you shall be blessed. We pray for the nations where there is no freedom to worship you in truth and spirit. You will open the doors for your people, O God. Preserve your church. Preserve your servants. Preserve, O Lord, every single saints of Jesus around the world. God. May the gospel be flourished. May the gospel be preached. May the kingdom of God be expanded. People be saved. Even we speak a blessing upon the nation of Israel. This morning, oh God, bless the nation. Bless the people. Lord, we pray, oh God, even the rest of the service, even the Holy Communion. Lord, prepare us for your second coming of Jesus. That is our hope. That is our hope. Prepare us, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We commit and service in the hand of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Praise the Lord and good morning, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is his Amen. Can we put our hands together and appreciate our God for this beautiful Sunday morning? And you all look awesome. You all look wonderful. God's grace, God's miracle, God's favor, everything is upon you. May God continue to bless you. Amen. And amen. As we appreciate our God, can you tell over to somebody and say, my neighbor, 
uh, left, right, friend, back, tell my neighbor, I am good to see you this Sunday morning in the house of God. May God's blessing, may God's protection, may God's grace be upon you. Hallelujah. Let me take this beautiful and wonderful opportunity to welcome you all to the second Sunday of June 2022. You are precious, you are blessed, you are highly favored in the presence of Jesus. And we are here in God's presence. Hallelujah. Can we give one more clap offering to appreciate our God? Amen. As we appreciate our God, let's acknowledge those who are visiting with us for the first time. This is your first time to attend a Sunday service in house of prayer. Would you please stand? We would like to acknowledge and appreciate any first time visitors this Sunday morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone here? All are part of the church. We also have a family friend of uh, our Dr. Paul and mom, Christine, Sarah, and uh, Jacob from visiting us from UK. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister. May God bless you. This is your home. May God bless you. May the Lord bless you. Enjoy God's presence. Amen. My mom, sister Tina, welcome back finally. Hallelujah. We missed you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly look at our bulletin page two for the announcement. A few upcoming events. Uh, this coming Sunday, the youth ministry is going to come for a prison visit. They will be visiting the ladies' swing. So as we announced on last Sunday, any of you would like to support in the area of finances or grocery or sanitary items or whatever item you would like to donate, but you can be in touch with the Pastor Peter or the Nadasha and the team in the youth. They will tell you what. You may not have a time to buy or shop, but whatever God has given you, you can give them the money they are able to do and to do the ministry. So please support our the youth ministry. Then men's meeting on the June 25th, 15 to 16, 30 hours. There will be men's uh, meeting. The topic will be the role of a man in church and families. All the men mark it in the uh, diary on that day. Don't miss then the children's and teen Sunday on August 21. The preparations are on the way. So uh, please parents make sure you do the needful. Then the Women's Sunday on September 18th and uh, sorry, Women's Sunday on September 18th and uh, Women's Retreat on October 24th. So may God bless all of you. Then I was informed just now our Dad Edward Mansas, brother-in-law, passed away in Kitwe, so uphold the family in prayer so that uh, may God's comfort be upon them. Amen. Let's all the activities are at the back of the bulletin. Let's look at the we have our intercession on Saturdays. Uh, Intercession. We have an intercession on Saturday, 8 to 9, every second Sunday, Saturday prayer walk. Then Saturday, uh, Sunday, 7.30 to 8.30, all of you are welcome and praise and worship practice and miracle night service. Every Wednesday, we have a miracle night service at Church 18.15. Tell your neighbor, don't miss the miracle night service. Then the ladies' meeting, youth meeting, everything is as even the discipleship classes as mentioned. Then as we've been announcing in the church past few Sundays, all those who are part of the ushering ministry, all the ushers, those who are joined recently and all the others, we have a brief ushers meeting today immediately after the service. It has been announcing, it has been on the bulletin, so please if you are part of the Asherik ministry, please don't run. Please be here so that we are able to discuss a few things with, uh, uh, with the team. May God bless you. May the Lord bless you. Then the another announcement is uh, your pastor will be on leave for a month from this Wednesday. So in case you don't see me this time, I am disappearing. Hallelujah. But the family is here. I'm going alone. I will be away for a month. Uh, cover me in prayer, God's presence, so that I will be back refreshed. And all the church programs, activities on courts, our miracle night service, Sunday service, intercession, all our activities continues. Everything is in uh, place. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. So keep, uh, remember me in prayer. And uh, anyone's birthday falls this week, would you please stand? Anyone's birthday this week, we have up our sister, our mom. 
or three birthdays. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We have our sister here. Hallelujah. Amen. Or even our daughters. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Those who are married and your wedding anniversary falls this week, do you please stand? We would like to pray with you, anyone, those who are married. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday. What a wonderful family. Our fathers, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters who are celebrating birthday this week. Holy Spirit, our prayer this morning as we pronounce God's eternal blessings upon these dear ones, may the God's abundant grace and favor flow over them, O God. In this season, as we stand firm in Christ for our supernatural victories, Father, we pray God's favor, God's grace, God's protection shall cover them. And everything you have promised for this wonderful people, Lord, it shall fulfill in this year. Lord, they are not just a blessing to their family. They are a great asset in the kingdom of God and a bless, great blessing specifically to the family of house of prayer. So this year, we pronounce many, many blessed years and God's blessing to be upon your people who celebrate birthday. Lord, we also remember our dad Edward Mansa. As they are bereaved, we pray God's comfort and the healing upon the family and get away God. May the Lord restore them cover them, strengthen them, Lord Jesus, because you are faithful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So in the name of Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, we bless our people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and appreciate those who are celebrating the birthdays. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Are we blessed, church? If you are blessed, look at your neighbor and say, I am blessed. Thank you, Jesus. There is an announcement from the youth ministry. Youth are having a football match. Is it today? No, no. Is it Pastor? It's today. What time? They are not sure, but the match is there. <laughs> time is not sure. So, the, so I will announce, youth are having a football match. Time is not sure, but it is today. Those who can join, get in touch with uh, Leonard or Pastor Peter. Amen. That is sure. Hallelujah. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. Please, all the youth, all the youth in heart, please, please, please uh, support, be Active, may God bless you. Is it pastor can join as a defender? <laughs> Hallelujah. May God bless you. We will have our holy communion at the end of the service. Let's turn to the Bible for the word today. Hallelujah. Even the offering, tithe and offering, we will take after the message before uh, the tithe and offering. The scripture reading this morning is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 19. Very well known scripture, Gospel of Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Gospel of Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Verse 8, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, 
Here are now, I give half of my possession to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. At this moment, I released the Sunday school and teens. I have gotten Sunday school teens uh, along with the teachers. Please go to your classroom, Sunday school and teens. Hello, may the Lord send them with an offering. Send them with an offering and a notebook if you have. Uh, may the Lord bless them. The ushers will pass by the Sunday school classes to collect, to just to teach our children. It is not about how much. It may be very small, but to just to teach them importance of giving to the Lord as they grow. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And one of the profound, I will put it as a miracle of transformation of life, which is recorded in the Bible. So this morning, because we have a Holy Communion, next 35 minutes, I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you a message titled, An Encounter with Jesus. An Encounter with Jesus. This is a very well-known scripture for all of us. I know all of you have preached many times. Most of you who are taught in the Bible studies, learned in the schools and Sunday school, heard many, many messages power to this. I'm not going to bring out something new or anything. But what I wanted to encourage you is a believer this morning. It is important to have a true encounter with Jesus if you are a Christian. It's very important. Today's message also will not be a very exciting hallelujah message, but it's also important. We learn to understand the principle of Christianity. Otherwise, we become always uh, emotionally excited Christians without knowing where we are, what we are doing. It is very sad when we look around church in general, church in un as universal, even if we look at any country, churches are filled with the people who had never an encounter with Jesus. They are there because some of us are born in a Christian family. We, are become, we have a Christian name. So we are in church. Some of us, we are taught it's become a tradition. It's become something. If Sunday, if you don't go to church, something is wrong. So you are there. Others, there are people in the church because church is also a community, a society. So you can associate with this community and society. And you know, where, where do you go to church? Yes, where do you go to church? I go to this and that. Who is a pastor? He or she is my pastor. So you have something to identify in the society. So we are going to the church. But... Hardly majority of us, this is including myself, we hardly went through an experience of having an encounter with Jesus. That is why in the Pentecostal circle we call to become a born again. So this morning, I just wanted to encourage us to evaluate even my life as a pastor. I can be a pastor, finish my college or school, 
go into the theological college, finish my training, got an opportunity, I can be a pastor. I can study the sermon, preach. If I am gifted in singing, I can sing. I can pray. But that doesn't make me as a pastor. Do I have an encounter of pastoral ministry? The same way, us, all of us, God has called you and I to be in the kingdom of God, to be a child of God. Have you ever experienced an encounter with Jesus? Because our churches are filled with the people who are not had an encounter with Jesus. That is why the world has come into church. Rather, church is going into the world, transforming the world and bringing the transformed person into the church and living a living epistle of Jesus Christ, living a life worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ. Rather, what is happening? Church become full of worldly things. Even if you tell me, Pastor, don't preach from next Sunday, I will still release it. Because these are the things we have failed to hear. The reason why, even I Wednesday, I reminded the congregation during the miracle night. When we go out, there is no difference between a worldly person and a Christian. This morning, my challenge is. We as a house of prayer family, we will be a people who have encounter with Jesus. We are Christians seeing Jesus. Seeing will not make any difference. It is like a, some of us, I don't like, that is the only thing, even when you can ask my, uh, she's not here, you can ask my wife, when she goes to shop right, I sit in the car only. Because for me, if she tells me buy a packet of salt, I will straight to go to the shelf, pick the salt, go to the cashier, I buy and go home. But these ladies, they, for a sh salt, they will start from the hardware items. When it reaches the salt, it is two hours. For me, I don't have that grace. So what I do to avoid fight, I said, my dear, go and do. Let me intercede in the house so that you will find the shelf for the item very fast and come back. And I'm sure no need to raise the hand. Some of my brothers and fathers are in my shoe. And we, I am with you. I'm praying for you. May God bless you. Hallelujah. And that is why, my sisters, you understand that when you go for shopping, why you get things cheaper? It is not because you are clever. The father, your husband is interceding in the car or outside. That is the reason. May God bless you. So that is not the... The, the reason is, we, some of us like to do a window shopping. Window shopping is what? You are seeing and coming. Real shopping, you are pull, pulling the wallet from the pocket, taking out your note, paying. Real purchase pays you. Window shopping doesn't pay. It only destroys. That is why Christianity, he become a coming to churches, become a window shopping. We come. Is it the... Let me tell you, let me ask this question. Don't tell me, don't tell anybody. Every Sunday after the service, we go for home. The first comment you tell your family, today's worship was not okay. Today's intercession was not good. Today's preaching was not effective. That is the first two, three things we will tell the others. Not outside your family. What does that mean? We came for window shopping. We came for window shopping. If, he, if Royanson came to church to connect to the throne of God, the moment you step in, you lost. 
Why you lost? You are having an encounter with God. You have forgotten who is sitting next to me. You have forgotten what kind of song you are here to have a connection with the throne of God. Today I pray and prophetically declare every my moms and brothers and sisters and the young ones, even the children at Sunday school, may you experience an encounter with Jesus. Now, coming back to the scripture, having or an encounter with Jesus. We know the story, not a story, the historic incident of conversion of Zacchaeus. Jesus is on a missionary journey. He's on his mission. Galilee to Jerusalem. Past. If you look at the previous chapter, end of chapter 18, as he was approaching the gate of Jericho, he performed a miracle. Someone's sight restored. Then the word of God says in chapter 19, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Jesus was passing through. Jesus is on a mission. So when, if you want, you, if you wanted to have an encounter with Jesus, the first thing you and I as a child of God, a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, what you and I must do? We must have an eagerness to meet Jesus. Eagerness, a strong desire. An eagerness to meet Jesus. That's why I'm connecting. We come to see. Not having an eagerness to meet Jesus. That is why this time. Church services. We go to church when we don't. We go not. Let's forget about church. We go to prayer programs when we don't have any other activities. That is very, when everything is okay, we go to church. When things are anything, I want it today. Ask God today, Lord, what is the first priority in my life? If my first priority in my life is Jesus, every opportunity I will have an eagerness to meet. Now, I just wanted to tell you something. If you are come, if, if, let's not, let me use that word you. If we have come, including myself, to church this morning with the eagerness to meet Jesus, there is a miracle happens. If you look at it, we read it here. Jesus was passing through. Now if you read verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now, this is where I want us to understand. It's as human beings, eagerness to have an encounter with God, that when that heaven sees in his from his throne, even though his intention is to pass through, that will change God's purpose for and plan for your life. It will change. Bible clearly says in verse 1, Jesus was passing through. He was on a destination to another town. But here, when he entered inside the Jericho, he something compelled him to change his assignment. Today, as a prophet, let me declare to you in the name of Jesus, as you desperately, eagerly waiting upon the Lord to have an encounter, Counter with him because of A, B, C, D, and Jesus is passing by. May he stop for you today in the name of Jesus. May he stop at your home. May he stop at your business place. May he stop at your family. May he stop at your office. May he stop in your family. May he stop at your situation. 
he will not just stop he will tell my son today i am coming to stay with you can you imagine the highest position of any country is the head of state if the our head of state of this country passing by when he sees you he tell the autocart stop and he comes out call my sister mary sambesi i am coming to stay at your house today it will change her because he's the head of state that's the word brother zimba was uh, using in the beginning when we are worshiping the lord the beginning when he a king comes or anyone who meet a king he does not to go the way he came if a head of state abruptly stop you and tell you i am coming to your house your every status will change hallelujah because you have a personal encounter with that person who is that who is the highest authority on this country if that is true the king of kings hallelujah the lord of lords creator of heaven and earth when he spoke everything came to be he said i come down I am coming to your house today. I want the house of prayer family to experience. Pastor, do we have any example? Yes. If I am not mistaken, it is in 1 Chronicles chapter 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 13. David, he is excited to carry the ark of God to the place of a destination. Ark of God in the, uh, uh, under the leadership of King David is passing by. Hallelujah. When it approached near to the territory of a Levite man called Obed Edom, there was some chaos. has happened the gada uh, oh bull was shaken and the uzaya touched the ark of covenant and ark of god he god struck uzaya he died david was shaken shook he was filled with the fear he was annoyed he said i cannot carry i was passing by but while he was failed to carry this next to the place he found a levite home called obed edom he decided this i cannot handle let me leave it to there the ark was passing by but when the incident happened there that nearby obed edom's house just for three months the word of god says in first chronicle chapter 13 within three months obed edom and edom and his entire household hallelujah were blessed and everything he had was blessed beloved child of god i pray this is why as a child of god when you are in an encounter with god negative or positive things may happen in your life what you need to know if you are eagerly waiting upon the lord he shall visit you he shall visit you what uh, obed edom's life and family changed because of an incident hallelujah and if you study the bible the history says the reason why david decided to leave uh, the ark at obed edom's house he comes from a levite family that means the one who supposed to handle the ark of god today you and i are a royal priesthood hallelujah you are a holy nation people purchased by the precious blood of jesus not in the world in the kingdom of god when god God purchase you and you have an encounter may the blessing of Jesus begin to manifest in your life ha. Zacchaeus Zacchaeus had the eagerness to meet Jesus my question do we have that eagerness 
Eagerness. Hallelujah. When you have that eagerness to meet Jesus, what happens is that eagerness brings the priority of being with Jesus as a first. Hallelujah. Second, because of the time. Encount having an encounter with Jesus. Not truly. Really. When you have an eagerness to meet Jesus, second thing, this is where we have another issue. Our social status should not limit you to have an encounter with Jesus. Our social status should not limit you and I to have an encounter with Jesus. So let's read it here. Let's read it. Chapter uh, uh, 19. Luke chapter 19 for the sake of understanding. Read it from verse 1. When then Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was being a short man. He could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming on that way. Here you could see, if you study all of even you have a, if you are using any study Bible, it's, there's a footnote of this one. There's nothing new I am bringing. He says he was a chief tax collector. That means he was in charge of maybe a region. He was a well-known person and the Bible clearly says he was a wealthy. He accumulated a lot of wealth through his profession. He was a well-known, he was a, I do not know how that time the chief tax collectors were looked at. Maybe some of them looked at them uh, like they are the people who squeeze out the money. But because of his position, I am sure he must be a well-known person, socially connected. But he had everything. He had workers around the region. He had enough money. He's, nothing is talking about his family issues. Nothing is mentioned in the Bible about health issues. Everything was perfect. All is smooth. But something was missing. He wanted to see this Jesus whom he people were talking. Hallelujah. Child of God, you can have everything. If you don't have a Jesus, we are missing everything. Hallelujah. You can have all the wealth of the world. But if you miss Jesus, hallelujah, you missed everything. You may not have anything on this world. If you have a Jesus, he is able to provide. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said, a soul of a man is more worth than the entire world. That is why the father decided to send his only begotten son to die because of the value. Can we, if that is how, can when you know many times when we go through, we, we think, oh, why God, you have forgotten me? Why God, you have left me? Why God, this? Can you imagine the value God has for us? The value, you may not, that's why, beloved, let me encourage you, people may not value you. People may look at you because of what you have. Tell them, thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. My value doesn't come from my relationship with you. My value comes from my relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be broken. People may be calling your name. Maybe because of what happened in the past. Maybe because of your history. Maybe because you went through. Maybe people may call your name. Let them call the name. You will rejoice and celebrate the reason. Your value, your reputation, your destiny comes through the connection you have through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray anyone who is seated here, you have been intimidated, you are neglected, you are rejected, you are broken. You don't know know how up the what the pain you are going through because what you went through if God is able to connect to the Zacchaeus then God is able to connect to you and your value is a royal priesthood a son of the most holy God a daughter of the most high God yes here comes a man whose social status I, my question is he's our social status is limiting God, 
limiting us to worship God. If my social status, my wealth, my name, my, my society where I live is limiting me to worship God the way God wanted. Beloved, be careful. God can take everything in a glimpse of an eye. But if you worship, he can give you beyond what a human can calculate. Hallelujah. What beyond human? This man, have you seen a man of such a social status? First thing, what is it? First, after that, what, what caused him? What really happened in this man's heart to forget to his social status? Just a simple one. So I just wanted to read next to five minutes. The same man says, first he had an eagerness. That what? That eagerness translated. What, what happened is, he, verse 3 says, he wanted to see Jesus. He being short man. First thing, the eagerness, when you have to have that eagerness to see Jesus, it will help you to understand your shortcomings. That is the most important thing. My, if, if I am a true child of God, when I sit here, I am not complaining about the shortcoming of Pastor Tani or Masali or Faustina. When I have an encounter with Jesus, he shows me my shortcoming. My shortcoming. My weaknesses. And churches are full of congregation and pastors are there. We are here to look for others' shortcomings. Look at your neighbor and say, I stop that today. We need to stop because God, when, the mo when the eagerness came in the heart of Zacchaeus, he realized, I am physically short. I wanted to declare to you, nothing, no shortcoming can limit you to meet our Jesus. No sin can limit you to meet Jesus. He hates sin. The moment Roy Ensign realized, he stretched his mighty hands and said, come my son. Come my daughter. So realizing the shortcomings, I pray we will be believers. Then he says, then he goes, he was the chief collector and was wealthy. Okay, before that, second, first, before he realized his shortcoming, second thing, put it first or second, he realized my social status is nothing before Jesus. That is where. I mean, that is the Bible says the word humility. And Apostle Peter said, humble yourself and before God, then he will lift you up. A humility, what does humility is? Humility is, you may have everything, but when I meet someone lower or higher, I respect. But when you are meeting Jesus, what is calling? He's a, he is a wealthy everything. He understood this Jesus of Nazareth. If I wanted to see, if I carry everything, I won't be able to see. I prophetically declare today, if our association or anything that is blocking you to meet Jesus today, may the Lord, you have an encounter with Jesus. Then the word of God says, he was being short, man could not, but he of the crowd. First, he realized his shortcoming. Second, when you wanted to, when you have an eagerness to Jesus, he, secondly, he realized the barriers he has to see the, to have an encounter. You have your shortcoming, then there are barriers. If you remember, that's why the word of God is very much interconnected. It is like a chain, it's connected. It was the same barrier the, the previous chapter, but Timoy has. He wanted to, he was crying in chapter six, chapter 18, the last part. Son of David, have mercy on me. The more he was crying, the crowd was shouting at him, shut. Why he don't do it? Barriers. I ask today in the name of, do you are struggling 
to meet to Jesus because of the barriers. I pray there's no barrier can limit you to meet Jesus. What you need is you need a strong eagerness. You need that eagerness to meet Jesus. When you have that eagerness, the crowd, then third, fourth, sorry, fourth, when you have an eagerness to have an encounter, God will show you a way. That way is the opposite of his social status. A man in a such, can you imagine? Let me ask a very simple question. Like a, I think yesterday evening our honorable president was here. Now you can imagine, one of, I don't know who is, but I'm just using an example. One of the richest men in Zambia. And he wanted to see the president while going through maybe President Avenue. Uh, do you think he will climb on a tree somewhere and watch? He won't watch. Because he may use his power to connect to the uh, pro, uh, head of state to have a meeting personally. With him. This man being rich and we know who was a part of the disciples of Jesus, Judah is career out. Judas, he could have gone him, I will give you 100 quarter extra offering. Can you connect me to Jesus? <laughs> he could have done it because we have taken Judas. Let me put a big offering. I want to meet Jesus. He could have done it. He didn't do what he did. He ran ahead. He ran ahead. Then what did he do? He climbed on a sycamore fig tree. He hid himself. That shows a willingness to overcome every limitation, every barriers, and understood I have to leave everything what I have to meet Jesus. I have to meet Jesus. And this is where you know, we live in a world where we want everything done in shortcut, within short time period. Anything you want to go, anywhere you want to go, everything is fast, fast. You are not even scared of giving, whatever. Can you do it for my brother, my sister? This, I, I, I can do it for two hours. We are ready. We want everything shortcut. Everything fast. That is why our relationship with Christ is also become a shortcut. It's become a shortcut. When everything is okay, we are with Christ. When things are not okay, I am here. When I got everything, coming back to Christ. Then we are here, we are here. Then here, I pray in the name of Jesus. House of prayer, congregation, no social status will stop us to have an encounter with Jesus. The way this man has surrendered everything. We shall surrender. Hallelujah. Thirdly, two more things that will conclude. An encounter with Jesus. Yes, and having an eagerness, uh, eagerness to meet Jesus. Secondly, our social status should not limit you to have an encounter with Jesus. Third, this is the most important thing, all of us. People may avoid you because who you are, but my Lord will never avoid you. People may avoid you, avoid you because who you are, what you have, but my Lord will never avoid you. Let's go back to the scripture, chapter 19, verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must say at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? This is the mystery of our God. Jesus is on the mission. Crowd is around, including the disciple, but no one understands what was happening. No one understood. Even I am sure, Jesus, talked. the word of God clearly says, that says, hallelujah, it says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, now this is the prophetic declaration I am declaring today from this altar. 
maybe some of you have reached certain levels of issues in the life some of you are like a chaos in the top of a thicker more victory that may be your situation some of you are struggling some of you are going through tough time you don't want to share with anyone but today hallelujah there is a good news jesus has spotted you jesus has spotted you when he jesus spots hallelujah no when i am sure when jesus i believe jesus stopped today that's my belief I believe people may wondering what is happening they may be thinking maybe he's going to touch somebody hallelujah maybe he may think he may be going to talk to somebody but nothing is happening but he knows why that exact spot he has maybe someone might have thought why somebody thought maybe jesus has stopped he he may be looking for some fruit, a fruit to eat it is not it is a destiny of a person i pray let me connect this to you to understand today we are here all of you are seated here i am sure you are able to tell testify years 5 10 20 30 40 50 60 years before jesus spotted me that is why i am here I was like I was in a mess. I was on a sycamore tree. I was in a confusion. I was totally under mess. I was sick. I was on a dead bed. I was broke. I was perish. But on that day, Jesus spotted me. As a result of spotting you, calling your name at 2022, 12th June, at this moment you are here. If Jesus can do that for you, if we have another encounter with him, beloved dad, mom, brother, sister, he will take us to another level. He will take us. He will take us. So Jesus spotted. People may avoid you, but my God will never avoid you. Hallelujah. Look at your another neighbor and say, thank you for avoiding me. Hallelujah. Just to tell him, thank you for avoiding me. Because when the men avoid you, that is the time you understand the love of God. When whom you expected they would stand with you, when they will turn their face like this, that is the time you say, you see, and re relate to the glorious face of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who said, I will never leave you, forsake you. I will be with you till the end of the age. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of the dead, I tell you, no one will walk with you in that. Your girlfriend will leave you. Look for somebody who is not walking through the valley of death. Your boyfriend will leave you. Your husband, your wife, your parents, your children will leave you. But only one person can say, I will be with you in the valley of the shadow of the death. When you walk through the fire, hallelujah. If, if Bible is wrong, I will give you a test. Now it's the winter season. Tonight you put a campfire campfire at your house outside. If you're a husband and wife, stand there and tell your spouse, I am walking through the fire, follow me. <laughs> then I will give you the microphone next Sunday to preach. I wanted to see how many of your wives or husbands or boyfriend or girlfriend. Your girlfriend will tell you, there is another guy, he, he has no bonfire, he has only swimming pool, I will go there. <laughs> But Jesus said, I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. People may avoid you. Hallelujah. Then, because of the time, the fourth one, an encounter with Jesus. Don't be distracted by the external noises you hear when you have an encounter with Jesus. Don't be distracted by the external noise. Here we could see immediately Jesus told him because uh, there is a lot of revelation, but I am just running because of the Holy Communion. The moment, hallelujah, the moment he came down and Jesus called, people said, they told him what they are talking, they are muttering, they are murmuring, what they are murmuring, this man is going to the sinner's house to eat. This is the picture of the world. When you are in the world, you are perfect. When you are in Christ, you are a wicked person. 
that is called noises around. A salvation, a true salvation must irritate somebody. I will tell you. If you are a truly born again child of God, has a living encounter with Jesus, it must irritate people. It must, if your salvation or not irritating somebody, that your salvation is questionable. It is questionable. That means you are still in the world. When you are with the drinking program, you drink. When you are in dancing program, you dance. When you are in smoking program, you are smoke. When you are in gossip program, you gossip. When you are in a fighting program, you fight. When you are in a cheating program, you cheat. When you are in a bribing program, you bribe. When you are doing all immoral things, you do. There is no conflict. But if you are a true child of God, you have a real encounter with God, it must irritate somebody. I pray your salvation must irritate people. Your salvation must irritate not the born again people. Your salvation must irritate the worldly people. Your neighbor, your colleague, your friends, uh, your people around you, if they are not born again, they it must irritate. People must talk. People must say because the Jesus has come into your life. Finally, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you should have a determination to display the true transformation. A determination to display true transformation. That is where this century Christians are failing. I'm not going, some of them I used on Wednesday example. I used an example, many examples I used, I think, in the Miracle Night Service. We cannot see the difference in the church and the world. Here, what did he say? I want just to just read uh, chapter 19, verse 8. This is the confession he made. What did he say? The moment he came out, Zacchaeus stood up. This is where I want you to understand. When you are with Christ, give you the grace to stand for. In the world, the word says, when the people are complaining, he forgot he was up there. I believe that he might have scratched his skin because the Bible says he came very fast. If I don't think according to his status, he has learned tree climbing. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of you have tried to climb the tree. Especially if you have not climbed, uh, tried to climb a coconut tree without the branch. It will teach you, if you don't know how to, I will teach you, I am very good in that. That's the place I come from. I can climb a coconut tree without anything. But you don't follow me, hallelujah. Because after a few meters, you will find you, will, without you imagining, you will come down. When you come down, all this place, it will be red color. All red color. So I don't know what could have been the condition. His uh, executive suit might have torn. But he said, I, he stood, stands, I pray. When we have an encounter with Jesus, whatever mess we are in, God make you to stand firm. What is that? He gives you a confidence. My past is gone. My future, my plan, I am with Jesus. I am standing with Jesus. My, de my designation changed. My status changed. My uh, relationship changed. My attitude changed. He stood. Then second, he speak to Jesus. What did he spoke to Jesus? He said, hallelujah. When, uh, verse 8, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, this is where, if you are a born again child, if you meet with a friend 10 minutes and only talking worldly thing, your salvation is questionable. If you meet a friend, a brother or non-brother, something must be talked about your Jesus. Something must be talked about your God. That shows, hallelujah, that is inside. I pray, house of prayer, congregation will be the people filled with Jesus. Then he says, what is it? He displayed the true repentance. What is that he said? I'm, said, if, let's read it. When our pastors are preaching that portion of the scripture, they omit, but we are going to read it, hallelujah. He said, look here. 
Uh, no, I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now, what? 21st century salvation, I will tell you how it happens. I, that is a uh, uh, trend, that is a move. I will make money for 20 years. We will use all the shortcuts and made money. Put the money in the fixed deposit. Then I say, I stopped, now I am born again. Hallelujah. You preach, you worship, but that money is not born again. That is not born again. Anything without God's word, Ryan son has accumulated, must go back where it comes from with interest. I know nobody will say hallelujah. But it is the word of God. It is what uh, the gospel of Luke chapter 19 says. He said, whatever I am cheated, four times I am giving. That is why many of so-called Christians generally carry curses. Let me tell you, let me open it, let me use myself. If I have accumulated wealth illegally, and I deposited in a fixed deposit. And I am pretending to be a pastor. I may live, but my generation will be see the result. That is why we have generations are not God-fearing. We generations are hardcore criminals. The reason the seed has not been removed. I pray in the name of Jesus. Even house of prayer, you tell the, now you go and tell pastor, elders, don't tell pastor not to preach this, but I have to preach. I have to preach the reason that this is why church is full of world. We have problems. We have sicknesses. We have demonic forces. We have evil things in the church. The reason we have kept what we are not supposed to keep. Then Pastor Royanson is prophesying. I am preaching. I am crying. I am praying. I am speaking in tongues. Maybe you may see oh, he's okay. But he watched on Nathaniel. He will, God will manifest. I pray. How so prayer shall manifest or display true picture of a transformation determination to display the true transformation i pray we are transformed i pray house of prayer we are transformed may the true transformation that took place in the life of zacchaeus be our portion then you are blessed bible never says after that zacchaeus become a poor man bible never says Hallelujah. I am sure when we meet in heaven, we will go and greet and shake the hand of Zacchaeus. After meeting Jesus, what happened? He has a great testimony. How God has blessed you. I pray that testimony be our portion as a house of prayer. Because he had an encounter with Jesus. Shall we close our eyes? Worship team, you can come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Having an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, as I am talking this, we know very well in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, there is a man approached Jesus with a very good question and asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus gave him the second part of the Ten Commandments. He said, I, from childhood, I am observing all this. Then Jesus said, go, sell your possession. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. The word of God says, verse 21, chapter, Matthew chapter 19. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had a great wealth. It is not the problem of wealth. It is not the problem of how much wealth he had. It is the problem of his attitude. Where his heart was. I pray today, as we listen to the word of God, we will be like a Zacchaeus, not the young, man, young wealthy man in Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 verse 21. How so prayer, we shall hear the voice of God. When
Let's have a church also pray filled with the people who have an encounter with Jesus. When we have an encounter with Jesus, not only your salvation changes, everything changes. Hallelujah. You will have a privilege, beloved child, in the heaven to fellowship with the Zacchaeus family. He has a lot of testimony will be there to tell us. Today, I pray, may the same testimony be the house of prayers portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Father, this morning, I surrender the house of prayer family in the hand of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the wonderful people. Lord, we pray, let's this year, let us have an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, so that we are able to stand and say, well, our first priority is Jesus. What I am longing is Jesus. What I need is Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you. Father, as the word has come, by prayer, anyone here who is listening, who is here, he, he or she never had an encounter with Jesus. Today, may he or she have an encounter with Jesus. May he or she leave the way Zacchaeus left that place. They may he or she have Jesus into their lives. Maybe some of us going through various difficult moments, difficult time, pain, sorrows, affliction, be everything. Today, my prayer, may the Lord spot that person today. May the Lord spot, may the Lord spot, may the Lord spot that person and give him or her a new joy, new hope, new life, new destiny in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the God who transforms. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is our Holy Communion Sunday. Pastor Peter, those who are visiting us, visitors, if you are born again, you are welcome to partake the Holy Communion. And in your own church, you partake the Holy Communion. You can partake because we haven't changed the direction the way we take the holy communion after the COVID, after the prayer when they're ready from this side ashes will direct us somebody will assist others will assist from one by one you can come here when you can show your hand we will drop the bread you can pick a cup of juice go and sit you on your seat don't partake after serving everyone we will partake together. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Beloved church, today we are privileged to have the Holy Communion. This is not a house of prayer table. This is the Lord's table. The bread and juice represent the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And the word of God clearly says we must examine our lives before we partake. So today, let's close our eyes as the word of God came. We had an encounter with Jesus, a true encounter with Jesus. As we had an encounter with Jesus, my prayer today, tell the Lord, if anything in me that is not pleasing, and acceptable unto the Lord. Lord, cleanse me with your blood. Wash me. Make me whiter than snow. Lord, let your presence, let your healing be upon me. Lord, cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Jesus. Cleanse me. Lord, cleanse me. Father, cleanse me. Jesus, cleanse me. Lord, cleanse me. Holy Spirit, cleanse me. Jesus, cleanse me. And the word of God clearly says the body and the holy communion remains the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. His death, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. 
and also it remains the second coming of Jesus is imminent before we partake beloved let's fill our hearts and mind with the suffering of our lord jesus christ the word of god clearly says from the garden of gethsemane to the golgotha the pain of our lord has gone even his closest disciple failed to stand with him at the last moment when he went alone and cried father possible take this cup away from me but not my will let your will be done and the word of god says his sweatings were like a blood drop that shows how heavy was his sin one of his chosen disciple betrayed him by a kiss the way the roman soldiers treated him he was flogged beloved flesh and blood from his body was shattered for our sin hallelujah thank you thank you thank you jesus they put a huge crown of thorns on his head and struck huge thorns pierced his head for us they slapped him they hurled insults on him they mocked him the lord carried that heavy cross falling many time to golgotha huge nails went through his hands and feet you know what they gave him a bit of vinegar to drink he was pierced blood and water came out finally he said it is finished beloved because of that perfect and eternal sacrifice this morning we can partake the body and the blood of jesus <laughs> to the lord thank you for the sacrifice thank you lord thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you father thank you lord for the sacrifice thank you jesus thank you lord tell the lord cleanse me wash me make me white than me so father we come into the people we come into the bread and juice sanctify in jesus name amen and amen
Anyone be having to receive the bread or juice, would you please raise your hand? If you are not able to come, we can come there. Anyone who have not received the bread or juice, shall we pray? On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread too. the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me let's drink from the cup too. thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Holy Spirit thank you Father thank you Lord thank you Lord, we want to say thank you for this day. You've given us the privilege to partake your body and the blood. Give us the grace to live a life pleasing and acceptable unto you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The bread and juice is remaining on this table. It's a sign indicating you are bringing many people from various nationalities, tribes, and language to house of prayer. Prepare our hearts to receive the Maga. And let give us the grace to overcome every challenge. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. At this moment, I request ushers to wait for the tithe and offering. Thank you, Church, for your faithful and the sacrificial giving to that sanctuary and to the God. You have been a very faithful church, very devoted. May the Lord bless you. May God return to you. Father, thank you for your people. As they prepare to give a God our prayer, may you open the floodgates of heaven and return to them thousandfold. Let them not lack anything, O God. Anyone among us 
who doesn't have anything today you are performing a miracle they shall have abundance and every single coin will be used for the expansion of your kingdom in Jesus name amen amen once again thank you so much church for you are faithful and the sacrificial giving may god bless you may the lord bless you may the lord bless you as the shirts are waiting just uh, quickly all the shirts to remain immediately after the service for a brief meeting may god bless you so all those who are existing ushers who are part of and those who have joined recently please uh, in case if you haven't received the rota but i have given you that i told requested you please remain i will give you the rota during the meeting so please we will it won't be a very long meeting just a brief to address few things may god bless you then all other activities please don't forget miracle night service to uh, wednesday looking forward to see you all during and the miracle night service on wednesday uh 1815 may god bless you may the lord bless you. one of the shares please don't forget to pass by the sunday school please pass by someone can pass by the sunday school uh, up and the sunday school and the teens places please someone can pass by may god bless you may the lord bless you shall we all stand thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you i surrender all to you everything i give to you with holding nothing with holding nothing with holding nothing with holding nothing, with holding nothing i surrender Ashes please pass by Sunday school up Sunday school up down and also behind hallelujah as we continue to worship the lord two ashes from the building committee please anyone any two from the building committee building committee ashes are not there just assist other ashes just uh, uh we this offering purely goes towards the construction of the sanctuary may the lord bless you may the lord thank you so much for your sacrificial support towards the construction of the sanctuary you have been so faithful you have been so devoted dedicated in the giving of the sanctuary that's why we have reached this far and lord will help us to complete and may the lord return to you thousand fold we you will never lack as you sacrificially giving to the lord as the shares are passing by if god has given you something drop that close your eyes we have done tell the lord today let me have an encounter with jesus a transforming encounter a character transformation life transformation spiritual transformation habit transformation or oh, everything must be changed must be transformed we must see a total change what the bible recorded the transformation we saw in the life of zacchaeus it must be seen in our life where we go hallelujah 
thank you jesus tell the lord thank you tell the lord what i am longing is to have an encounter with jesus tell the lord what i am longing is to have an encounter with jesus oh hallelujah rakabala ruda bara jala gada rakala round let the lord touch us hallelujah as we have come as you are having an encounter with jesus if you carry any sickness here today the lord is healing there is no sickness can remain in the presence of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus may the lord heal you right now in the name of jesus maybe you have carried a heavy burden and today you are still crying to the lord as you are having an encounter with jesus may the lord restore that burden may the lord take away that burden may the lord give you peace may the lord give you love may the lord give you joy and confidence and some anybody came with a confusion waiting for a clarity today i declare clarity of mind in the name of jesus clarity of mind in the name of jesus may god release that oh god thank you lord thank you jesus father this morning as a house of prayer family we surrender before you thank you god for allowing us to come to worship you in truth and spirit thank you god for the word even partaking your body and your blood thank you father for help giving us this wonderful people who give sacrificially to lead the tithe offering thanksgiving offerings even towards the construction of the sanctuary may this week they may harvest thousand four let them not lack anything oh jesus let them not lack anything oh jesus oh god let them have abundance oh god as we go home we cover the end house of prayer family under the blood of jesus no accidents no sicknesses no premature death no calamity no affliction no sorrow shall come to their territory they shall live peacefully their job their businesses their education oh god shall be blessed father the children the school shall excel people in the office they shall be excelling those who are in the business they will be blessed those who are in the field their works of their hands and the crops and the animal livestock will be blessed Every the works of your people will be blessed there be peace and joy and tranquility upon their family oh god now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen uh, amen god bless you richly have a blessed and wonderful week enjoy see you on wednesday during miracle night